uh, I thought I'd come on today and let you know about uh, why or the specific things that you need to succeed as an interior designer and how these link in with uh, our modules. So today I wanted to cover uh, the branding and uh, branding, business structures, legals and the websites. We put this all into one because, um, well, let's start with brand. This is the funnest part because everyone kind of thinks, well, why do you want to, why do you start with branding? And it's, it's a good question, but most of the time, even if you're an experienced designer, who's been in the business for a while, um, the brand gives you focus and it gives you focus directly related to your ideal client. So by giving you a bit of focus and helping you kind of rethink about your brand, we start off with giving you focus for the rest of the course. I think the biggest confusion a lot of people have, especially if they're just starting out and they think, well, I don't, I have no idea. Well, exactly. This is the whole point. We need to give you something to start from because obviously we take in both experienced designers and uh, people who are starting afresh and those of you who have never had any experience with um, starting a business or even becoming an interior designer, they, the questions we always get is what's the point in doing this right now when I have absolutely no idea whether I can even be an interior designer. And then I think the answer to that, well, the answer to that is, is you still need to make a start because, um, the type of interior design that you end up wanting to become is always rooted in who you are anyway, because there's not just one type of interior designer, even though that's what most interior design schools will make you believe. They're, the type of interior designer I teach you to become is the one that you are in within you. So whether you're interested in particular things like um, more decorating and styling, or whether you're coming from an architectural background like myself, that gives you the edge over other people and starts to make you different. And this is why we start looking at this straight away. And uh, taking action, I think this is the hardest part is because starting from nothing, you've got to make a decision and that decision making process is absolutely the hardest part. The hardest part of being an interior designer or starting a business is making decisions. And that's what we help you to create. So. The branding start um, is is really it's it's the funnest part because this is the most visual part, which um, gives you a way to start making decisions and saying, well, actually, no, maybe I'm not the kind of designer who wants to be in luxury, or maybe I am. And uh, no matter where you're starting out, we can start making those decisions because it really does matter, because the visual aspect of what it is that you're creating is what attracts your clients. And so this is all tied in together and making that first decision doesn't mean that it's forever. And actually it's not, and it's highly unlikely that it is. It just means that you're making a decision that's okay for now that helps you make further decisions. So you've got to start. This is one of the biggest barriers that most people have when they're starting to become an interior designer or starting any kind of business is they just overthink things that don't matter right now. And this is why we kind of guide you to make a decision, and it's just for now. That's okay. And then we refine that decision as you learn more, as you get the skills as an interior designer, as you start to realize, well, actually I do like to draw in 3d or I don't. And then all of these things start to refine who it is that you are by the end of the program. So what's next? We start looking at structures. This is a bit of a scary one because most people think, well, why am I looking at business structures? I don't even know anything, but you still need to have these things in place. And this is the scariest part because making a decision on whether you want to be a sole trader, a uh, limited liability or a partnership, or you're having a company, these things matter. And they can be really, really scary because um, nobody knows uh, what they need to do at the beginning. And this is where the guidance really comes in handy because um, they're big decisions and you have to start making them early because um, how you take money and payments from people, one of the most basic things as, uh, as, as a running business. So even just to take a payment, you need to understand the structure of your business and how it's set up. So we do that at day one, because what happens if next week you get a client and you don't even know how your business is set up? And that's a real possibility. So you really have to have your um, 
understanding or at least the structures of what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be running your business straight up. And these are the less fun things about a business, but we get them done straight away and out of the way. In the same way, which is the next thing that we look at is the legal sides of things. Even though understanding terms and conditions and we'll give you all the templates so that's not you know it's not the most difficult things um most people don't want to read terms and conditions and they think why is this something we cover in the first module but actually it's not until you've done all of the learning and you've gotten that first client and you think oh thank goodness this is all set up i don't have to do this now once i've got my client i can just deal with my client and that's exactly where you should be at by the time you're getting your uh, your clients and you need to know that everything's sorted. Having read through that terms and conditions once is actually really, really critical because you don't have to read it and understand every single thing straight away. But having just read through it once means that the first time you speak to your client, you might already be aware of things that you might be over promising on or things that might impact your contract that you would never have even thought of before. So even just having understood what it needs to be in your terms and conditions starts to make you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't be promising that I'm going to keep on revising these things until my client's happy because that's not in my contract. So, and how that affects the trajectory of your, um, of your project and how you end up making a profit or not on that. So these are the things we start thinking really, really early on. And, um, as you can see, this is really different to any other course out there because why would you start doing these things? Well, this is exactly why, because this is the stuff that actually matters if you want to succeed as an interior designer. And it's the stuff that we have to get out of the way really, really early on, because it also isn't the fun stuff. The branding is, and the website might be, but it's kind of not the funnest part. And so we do it right at the beginning when you're really excited. <laughs> and I think that's kind of my trick to get it all done. Um, because it just takes a week and it's done and then forevermore you've got it all sorted and it's out of the way whereas most people are even like trading for years without insurance they don't even know whether they need an accountant or that they need to call the tax department <laughs> like or you know it, or they're working for free because they're too afraid to even do those things and this is the stuff we just get out of the way really really quickly and it's a really refreshing thing to have know that you've gotten done just after week one <laughs> so well actually you've got two weeks because um, we uh, we do have uh, one module has homework and the next one doesn't so it kind of has this ebb and flow that gives you um a week of action a week of learning a week of action a week of learning so it, it all melds in together so the last thing we kind of go through is website and this is a really nice visual way to see your decisions through that first few weeks and this evolves so you're not the intention isn't to have a completed website at the end of the first or second week the intention is to have a website started so that you can actually see the decisions evolving and um obviously things like seo you're never going to be searched um if you've just created a website no one's going to find you in that first week anyway so it doesn't matter it's better to have your website up and published as quickly as possible so it does start working for you with seo so that people, when it's time to get a client, people are finding you because you've done the things, you've put the SEO terminology, as we've shown you how to do, to into the right places and, you know, built the website in a way that matters to attract the clients that you're looking to attract. The other thing we go through is mindset. Every single module has mindset, every single module has marketing. And we introduce that in this kind of first week because marketing to start working for you takes a little bit of time, especially if you're um, an experienced designer now starting to refine why things aren't working or why you haven't been um, successfully attracting clients regularly. Or for those of you who are just starting out thinking, well, I want to work with everyone. I just, I don't care. I just want a client. So um, we start looking at learning about marketing and introducing these terms about ideal clients, um, niches and all of the things that actually matter <laughs> um, really early on so from day one the kind of marketing aspect is weaved into every single module uh, we also do have one module that actually pushes you to do all of the marketing but in every single week we're asking you to take little steps and this is the beauty of the program because we are taking action steps every single day 
and not just doing like homework that's nonsense it's just it's actual things like calling the um calling the insurer and asking what kind of insurance we need um calling the accountant actually setting up your company if that is the uh what you're going to be doing so all of these things that you're you kind of think are required later on we do really early on because they're out of the way so that when you've gone through this little next period which i'll go on into on monday which we start learning about interior design um and then on tuesday i'll cover um drawing and um then later presentations these kinds of things we go through we this kind of first module really pushes you to just put things in place kind of structures that just set you in good stead for the rest so we start off it, it seems really difficult but it's actually really fun and exciting and you should be a little bit nervous because these are legal things and these are the things that need to be in place if you're actually serious about starting a business serious about being an interior designer so there's a little bit of excitement a little bit of apprehension but the good news is, is we're all there with you doing it so you're not alone and i think that is the fun part because you're doing these things together kind of like like feeling vulnerable i think because i remember when i was starting my business i felt vulnerable calling or even like clicking um load on my website it was really scary but you're doing all this together and <laughs> the good news is, is even for those um experienced designers knowing that actually all of this stuff is now guided in a way that is the right way rather than just taking a guess and hoping that this all works it's like no no this works this is trusted it's been proven by hundreds and hundreds of students now and mentees and now successful interior designers who are out there working and living the dream so it's um it's not a guess it's an actual system that just works and every single day you're working towards that and you start to the first half of the program i think we we start to well it can be a little bit scary because you're being guided and really trusting the process by me but then in the second half you really start to believe it and um that's where i think the big change and shift happens this is why we do need to cover a little bits like mindset and marketing every single module because um it can be scary well it is scary starting a business you really care about your career <laughs> You know, this no one goes into or no one is serious about changing careers without it actually being something that is really meaningful in their life. You know, this is what you spend the majority of your life doing. So you want to do it right. <laughs> and you want someone who knows what they're doing to be guiding you and to have a support network with you doing it at the same time. So that's all I want to cover today. Oh, except for one more thing, which is why does this lead to um success i i mean i've tied it in anyway but um the real end result is branding uh structures legals websites these things lead to success because they give you direction they give you clarity they put all of the legal things in place and then you're sorted for the rest of your life you do it once that's all that matters and that's a really really nice thing to know and then we do it once with guidance and i think that is really cool because doing things on your own can be really really scary